What up, everybody? This is Michael from Small Batch Cigar, a.k.a. Hot Mike, a.k.a. Reginald, and you're watching Cigar Noise Weekly. Cheers. Thanks, Mikey, and welcome back to Cigar Noise Weekly. I'm Dave, your host, and this week I'm excited to announce another new member to the team. Erica and Amy debate the finer things in life. Rich talks about cellophane. Ted has your Cigar of the Week, and Dom calls Tyler out. So fire up your favorite small batch exclusive. Today we're drinking from the bottle. It's time to make some noise. It's been a slow news week, but we do have a couple of things to look forward to. This week, Herrera Esteli announced their Connecticut Broadleaf Lancero is going nationwide. Previously, it was only an exclusive to Stogie's World Class Cigar. Look for it on the shelves in 15 count boxes. And Hoya de Nicaragua is announcing a new size for the Cinco de Cotas as well, named El Doctor after their chairman, Dr. Cuenca. These are 6x52 torpedoes and are in that beautifully simplistic 10 count box. And now I'm extremely excited to announce our newest member to the team, San from Vino and Leaf, to talk to us about cigar and wine pairings. I really hope y'all don't think that I'm that pretentious. I'm saying y'all from Vino and Leaf, and I'm coming to you today with a wine and cigar pairing with Cigar Noise. Today I am smoking the Black Star Line El Milagro, and I am pairing that with a South African Shiraz by Miss Carmen Stevens. This makes for a really great pairing because both the cigar as well as the wine have wonderful baking spice notes on them. On the cigar, I do get a lot of the star anise. I get a lot of nutmeg, which you know are baking spices, pretty much probably associated with fall too. On the retro, I get a lot of cedar and buttered toast. Kind of puts you in the mind of a Ritz cracker. Please tell me y'all have had Ritz crackers before, the buttery crackers with the little salt on top. As I've continued smoking as well as drinking, cheers y'all, this wine, blackberry, smoky oak, tobacco, baking spices, stone fruit, and semi-sweet chocolate from the South African Shiraz by Carmen Stevens is complementing very well this cigar from Black Star Line. As I'm coming out of the first third and getting into the second third of the cigar, I'm getting more white pepper, almonds, a little bit more earth, still continuing with that kind of buttered bread, Ritz cracker um, note on there, as well as some sweetness like molasses. Definitely going to be medium body um, as far as flavors are concerned and definitely going to be uh, thus far medium in strength as well. The Shiraz is continuing to deliver those kind of gutsy red grape flavors. A lot of tobacco, smoky oak, blackberry, and stone fruits. Think like a really sweet, juicy black plum. That's what you're gonna get here. I'm gonna continue enjoying this El Milagro from Black Star Lines, as well as the Shiraz. Cheers, y'all. Thanks, Dan, and be sure to check her out at Vino and Leaf on Instagram for a lot more. And next, we're going to learn about cellophane, that crazy stuff that looks like plastic but isn't plastic. What is it? How to get here? Why do we use it? Rich has the answers. Most of the cigars that we buy today come individually wrapped in cellophane. Okay. This provides physical protection to the cigar during shipping, so they don't have as many cracked wrappers anymore. It allows uh, humidity to go through the cellophane and into the cigar, so you can properly humidify a cigar with cellophane. It allows you to see through. It's clear, which is good, and we'll get to why that's important in a minute. It also allows barcoding on cigars very easily, which retailers certainly appreciate. So cellophane has a ton of advantages. Where did it come from? How did people start wrapping their cigars in this stuff? Uh, well, in 1918, they started wrapping cigars in foil for protection during shipping. And what ended up happening was people would get the cigar, open it up, and realize that you couldn't see it, and it was kind of a mess. Now that I've opened this foil, I don't want the cigar that's inside it. It's all screwed up, but I couldn't see it before. So in 1927, the first company to use cellophane was J.C. Newman. It was the student print cigars. 
that they started wrapping individually in cellophane. The important part was that you could see through to the cigar, so you could see the quality that you were buying, which is a big game changer. And then everybody started using cellophane after that, and that's where we are today. So thank the J.C. Newman Cigar Company for innovation with cellophane. Thanks, Rich, and be sure to check him out at Mukal Rich on Instagram. And next, let's check in with Amy and Erica to see which topic gets pulled from the hat. Erica here. Amy here. This is Teal E podcast on Cigar Noise Weekly. Woo! Last week we had a debate. Amy was uh, agreeing to the topic. Now we switch it up. I have to agree, and we'll see how, what happens. So let's go. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's Read see. it out loud. Deep cut is better than straight cut. Totally not. Straight cut is the real shit, okay? Deep cut is just another way to say, I want fancy. Listen, bitch, you're going to, first of all, fucked up all your cigars, and especially if you like your cigars dry as I do, okay? No, I like to keep my cigars, Amy, wait, hold on. Because, Between no. 65 and 69, that's my, that's my humidity that I keep my cigars. Most of the time, when your cigars are at this, at this humidity, they tend to be more on the drier side. So when you're using the V-cut, you can't cut them because it's gonna unravel, it's gonna crack it or damage your fucking cigars. And straight cut, first of all, is the original of the cut. Like, you can't go wrong with a, with a straight cut. A V-cut is just one, I think it's, it looks, it looks cool. It's not cool. <laughs> well, V cuts, I think they they just they look a lot. It looks a lot more classier. The cigar that you're smoking, you know, you can get more uh, cigar smoke out of it. You know, you could really cut any other cigar, whatever whatever gauge that you're smoking. Uh, the V cut. <laughs> this straight cut well, is gonna cut every single cigar the best way even torpedo you can cut it on an angle that's different i can cut i can cut a cigar with would a, it, v, a, a torpedo a with a, a v cut would it be cut your your torpedoes are going to be just one way you can just like you know go deeper than if that uh when you like you you can when you're using a straight cut and that's v what cut she equal. said oh my god now with a v cut you can only go so deep so <laughs> <laughs> so wrong. <laughs> really is. The V cut again. It looks super classy. It's dope it's as fuck. It's not because it, it's how versatile it's, you can it's, utilize the cigar. Your will smoke better. All right, guys. You tell us who won. <laughs> Thanks, ladies, and be sure to check them out at Tealy underscore podcast on Instagram. And check out their podcast tomorrow to find out their true feelings on the subject and probably, let's be honest, a lot of other shenanigans. Next, we're headed to Ted for your Cigar of the Week. This week's Cigar of the Week is Dagonor Salif Claude Lachine. And it's another Guardian of the Farm release. And uh, I want to... First of all, send a big shout out to our own Moo Cow Rich for giving me a quick French lesson because evidently I've been mispronouncing the name of this cigar ever since its release in uh, March of 2019. So thanks, Rich. Appreciate it. Uh, never took French in school. Not really up on things that are French. Uh, I like some things that are French. Uh, French bread, French press, French fries. Those are all, all good things. So I appreciate France giving us all those things this week's cigar comes to you in a four and a half by 48 size is about what you can uh, expect from the sizing on it. i've measured several of them some are a little bit bigger smaller in length but that's pretty consistent uh these were a small batch cigar exclusive i don't think you can get them anymore on small batch so stay tuned through my entire review because somebody is going to get a little bit lucky next week as long as you pay attention to the details. So this is a Nicaraguan Puro, uh, uses a Nicaraguan Rosado uh, wrapper with Nicaraguan binders and fillers and uh, not typically uh, from Corojo and Creole uh, 
tobacco is what I normally expect. I normally expect something a little spicier. And it's just not the case in the profile of this cigar. But I typically find that this cigar is some undertoned floral notes, um, some chocolate, uh, some nuttiness. Really, really good mix of flavors. Very consistent. I've smoked a handful of these or more. And they've all been very, very consistent and very similar in profile. Uh, so the Guardian of the Farm series, let's talk about that for just a second. Several different cigars in that line. And the Guardian of the Farm series, the names of the cigar are originally named after the dogs that are used to guard the Aganorsa farm in Nicaragua. However, this cigar steps out of, uh, steps out of that realm. And it's actually uh, named after Andrew from Small Batch. If you've had a chance to meet him, I've never met him in person, but I have had a chance to do a couple of virtual herfs with him. Uh, this is actually named after uh, his French blue, blue French bulldog. So this particular Guardian of the Farm series uh, steps out of the norm of being named after the farm dogs in Nicaragua is actually named after some lucky dog in California. Uh, so what I would like you to do is tune in to this review next week. And there's going to be a small question that I'm going to pose on there regarding this review. And first person that DMs me on my Instagram page is going to be lucky enough to get hooked up with a special treat. So best of luck to you. We'll see you next week. Cigar Noise Weekly, Cigar of the Week. Aganor Salif, Claude Lachian. Thanks again to Mukau. Thanks, Ted, and be sure to check him out at Ted Runs Again on Instagram. And last but not least, Dom hopes to improve Tyler's Instagram game in just two and a half minutes. Tyler, your Instagram pictures suck, but it's okay. You have a friend in me. All of you out there, sure, you, you smoke good cigars. Fantastic. Maybe you collect good cigars. Wow. But then your Instagram game is just off-putting, to say the least. You don't need to go buy a Bugatti lighter. You don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on a cutter. You don't even need to buy a new phone. Where'd you go? Come, come back over here. Back to the front. Ah, much better. Yes. Okay. Let's go find some, some quality cigar content from a thrift store and spend like five bucks of doing it. V come on, I'll show you the way. Let's go to work. <laughs> Well, now that was a good time. No alcohol required. Let's see what we got. Check out those ties. If you want to tell your friends, hey, look, I'm a professional. Professional at smoking cigars. Throw these in one of your picks. Oh. Next, coffee mug. You have to have a coffee mug from a thrift shop. Uh, but it's got to be fun. It's got to be aesthetically pleasing. And it cannot have a thick lip. Coffee, just don't do it. Oh, look at that little handle. It's a little fancy, nice little Studebaker. Mm. Remember those back in the day? <laughs> uh... Yeah. Oh, but you say, I don't drink coffee. Do you eat soup? Guess what? This doubles as an ashtray. Knock your ashes in your soup bowl. And finally, last but not least, welcome, friends. These are some welcoming geese that will just add to that mise-en-scene of your cigar photo. <laughs> what, are the, what are these two doing, huh? They're playing naughty tag. <laughs> well, hopefully you've learned that you don't need to spend a lot of money on fancy gear. Go to the thrift stores, take cigar picks. Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> no. Thanks, Dom. Be sure to check him out at Cigar Underscore Analogies on Instagram. And if you want to learn more about Tyler and Dom's budding bromance, check them out at Cigar Noise Boys on Instagram and tune in their podcast as well.
And remember, if you would like to make contributions or suggestions to the show, email me at dave at cigarnoise.com. Until next time. As we close with our social media Cigar Noise hashtags of the week, I'd like to say thank you very much to all of our special guests, everyone that makes this show happen each week, and Tom Thurow for sharing his musical talent with us. So what? Oh, oh wait. you're making you're making topics fly out now. My bad. All right. This week, Herrera is ah. now B cuts. I believe. <laughs> Sorry, edit that shit out. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> Thanks, ladies. Be sure to check them out. On, ah. <laughs>